Let's do it. Okay. Hello. Hey. It's Asha, uh, aka Nanush, um, from Melbourne, Australia. And we have... Cecilia, living in Malmö, Sweden, musician, um, artist, a lot of different things. And we met when you, when you lived in Malmö. I did. So I, I moved back to Melbourne. Um, I lived in Malmö for four years, had an amazing musical journey, a very creative time. I couldn't find a job for a really long time. It was very difficult to find a job. Um, like, you know, just regular work. But I actually got to meet amazing artists like yourself. And for those four years, you made more for Malmö City than anyone I've known has done. <laughs> so you oh. made a huge impact here. And it's really boring now when you're not here anymore. I'll be back. I'll be back in the summer for sure, because Melbourne winter is very depressing. Um, yeah. Thank you for that. I think because when you when you move to a new city, sometimes you just have to like you throw yourself in the deep end a little bit. Don't you think? Like you know, yeah. I don't know if you've ever moved. Yeah, over of course, to you have to, you have to be more uh, like some outgoing and focused. Uh, and I, I think, think. You, you radiate that energy, and then the good stuff comes to you. Um, and I met yeah. I met some amazing like soulmates. Uh, living in Malmo, I've shout out to Synth Babes Oyder and Lotta and Jenny Nilsson and Rania Sadi and Evangelina Gina Ofo. And the biggest thing that, that really made an impact on me was Pop Colo. So maybe you want to talk a little bit about Pop Colo and what it is and what it does for people. Maybe. Yeah, Pop Colo is um, it, it's a music camp for girls. It started out on more for younger girls or, or people that identify them as girls uh, from the age of 12 to 16. And I got involved in 2005. It was formed by, it was, the idea came from a, a musician called Marit Bergman in Sweden. Oh, sorry. Fuck off. <laughs> And uh, sorry, <laughs> and and uh, because in, in 2005 she uh, was um, having a quite big career in Sweden, and she was touring uh, all over all, all the music festivals and stuff, and and then she was like, but where's the female artists? It was only like guy bands and stuff. Oh, uh, and then she she had heard of, of um, rocker camp for girls. I think they started in the US. Yeah rock camp yeah and so she had heard of them of that existing in the u.s and then uh, in in those days there was a music production um, sorry for all these notes <laughs> it's fine. It's it so was this music now. production education in hulsfred in the middle of sweden in the woods <laughs> there is this uh, this uh, place and um, hannah and osa uh, to women that went to that education, they formed the first uh, pop colo. I think that was in 2004. Uh, and, um, and since then, uh, we started out there in the woods. And the second year, I was invited as a guest uh, teacher. And it started out quite chaotic. The whole concept was that young girls for a week uh, would uh, be able to play in little bands and have a little mini career in a week. Mm -hmm. And the also idea was that they would um, be able to meet active female musicians being in the role as oh, wow. like teacher, but it was not, uh, uh, no one is like educated um, pedagogue uh, it was more like uh, hands-on, just showing and the thing. experience-based sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and then I, I was there invited for the first year. And then it was like uh, when I entered this room with only uh, female, uh, young girls and female, it was so, such a power. Yeah. Since because I started to play in the 90s, I was the only girl playing in a band with guys. What, and, what was um, the band? It was Souls, is that right? Souls? Yeah, it was called Souls. Very yeah. bad name. Free internet name. <laughs> but uh, I was, I, I've always been quite alone. And in the 90s, if there were females around, if other women playing, um, it was more like you were competing. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah, I mean, it's so we were cardigans. Because we were so brainwashed, is yeah. as soon as a woman woman entered, yeah. you you like compared yourself or were competing. Yeah. It's really really terrible. It's and uh, so internal, um, you know, misogyny, you know, internalized misogyny. Like, yeah. you're, you're competing, whereas when you actually like, like if you if you went in cahoots, you'd be a lot stronger. You know? Yeah, and I remember actually, and Hundsfred, where Popcola started, that that's where one of Sweden's uh, biggest um, music festivals is Hundsfred's festival, and so it, it was also fun that the the Popcola was there. And I think in the in the beginning, uh, the little the little participants <laughs> they even got to play at the big yeah. festival. Oh, did the they end. at Hundsfred? Yeah, oh, that's in, cool. in the very beginning, it was like they that. Like have their little mini band and then go on stage. That's yeah. so amazing. I mean, like imagine that for, how old were they, like 13? It, actually the first year they were really young. They were all eight or nine. Oh, really? And then, yeah, they were so <laughs> tiny. But then eventually we realized maybe it's good, better that they're at least 12, liksom, because yeah, that's a know, many of them get homesick and it's yeah. like, you know, yeah. But uh, I, I, I got very involved uh, and then I was very active in pop color for 10, 15 years. And I also started the, the little, uh, the Frening in Malmö. Mm -hmm. What do you say Frening? Uh, like the, the board or the... Society or uh, yeah, organization that started in Malmö. But the, the cool thing is that it started out in, in Hultsfred and now I think we have like, we're all over Sweden now. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's, it's grown and become like some... Um, it's just become a, it's really become a phenomenon and I think also like... Yeah. Very, oh, I mean, for me, doing, because I work, because you recruited me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, to be on the board and I was on the board and then I got to teach at Pop Colo and honestly it was probably one of the most important weeks of my life it was like it literally just it just threw me I was just like I can't even like express it I got married that summer and I have to say like that when that was on like par <laughs> it was on the same level <laughs> yeah. I was like got married then uh, did pop color and I was like, hmm, which one affected me the most? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I mean the 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 girls and the non-binary and the trans teens yeah. that I met there were just like wonderful, and I'd love to shout out to all of them for inspiring me so much. You know, like they mm -hmm. might say that you know we inspire them, but really like they inspired me. And I loved my my band. Well, one of the bands was called Manspread. <laughs> yeah <laughs> and that was like an electronic band and like we did like field recording workshops and you know i could hear like little drops and you know just it did, as an artist for me that really was powerful because when i was growing up i was like you i didn't have i didn't have those role models i was one of 50 15 15 in one class of boys and me I mean, that's just like what that, that ratio is just crazy. Like I felt so out of place. And also like, I loved Jewel and Tori Amos and Fiona Apple and all these like amazing artists. I don't know if you've heard Fiona Apple's new album. Oh yeah. Oh no, my not God. The latest. Not it's, the latest. Oh my God. You have to, you have to, everyone has to hear it. It's incredible. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's especially like fetch the bolt cutters. It's like fetch the bolt cutters. I've been in here too long. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, this is like, this is like pandemic, like, you know, all of us stuck inside. Anyway, yeah. but yeah, but like being in that classroom full of, yeah, boys and all punk rockers and feeling very um, out of place. I mean, look, they, they, were, they were nice, but they also made me feel, it was very intimidating. I think it's, I think it's, a, I think that in, in one sense, I think it's good to segregate when you are like um, in that age group, I reckon, because it's you that age group, but you're 12 to 16. Yeah. But, I, but I do think that uh, young guys would should also have something similar because I've been yeah. approached a lot of young men like, why, why don't they have, why don't you do pop color for us? And I'm like, you are really welcome to do pop color yourself. <laughs> but then guys have to arrange it. I'm not 
going to do it like so another thing that i think is is good to mention is that what i did 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 like in the beginning uh, when we were sitting and doing uh, the the um, our manifest in pop color like when you write the board um, rules and all that yeah we have in the we call it stadgal in sweden i don't know what to to call it here what that point like the yeah the juridical points for your society like some that the day when the music business is equal between sexes then we will stop doing this <laughs> that's good uh, and unfortunately it's not happened. there yet it's not but, right. but it has become so much better and what i do think is so nice i have left the to be really active now i'm not active anymore but i now i've started to meet a lot of young uh, female musicians saying that they started in pop color and that makes me so yeah, yeah proud. that really, like brings your heart out to the but you also yeah. organized um madame so you organized the, um, the older yes, people. after a couple of years uh, in Pop Colo, we f- we saw that some young um, kids that came, they didn't really want to be there. It was their mothers that had sent them. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. mothers, they were actually the ones re- really wanting to go. And then we thought a clever thing to start Pop Colo Adult, uh, and that was also a way to fundraise. Uh, the camps for the young girls so yeah. as a way to get money we we did for 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 adult people so that's we in the original we call it pop color madame yeah. but then um, we changed the name to pop color adult like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah but you went to pop color uh, madame i saw no, I didn't. Did you? I did. No, 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 please, no. But so, um, yeah, mm-hmm. that was also really. What the fuck is that noise? <laughs> it's something beeping. I don't know what it is. Our home is all right. alive. All right, it's all right. We can have little background noises. That's fine. Yeah, um, it's okay. <laughs> um, but I was gonna say, like, what do you think? Like, like, what are your? What have been your annoyances on stage? Like, what have you struggled with the industry? when you think about the music industry, what are your biggest, what do you think are the biggest problems right now and have been? Um, I think I, if I start to how it was, when I, how it were in the nineties, it was um, totally on the, on, on the guys, uh, uh, per- permis, permits, on the guys, um, like, um, um, it was totally on their, uh, uh, then, the, their norm or anything and I always want had I always changed myself uh, to become more like them it was never that I felt that maybe they were doing it wrong <laughs> uh, the whole the whole scene I played in the rock band and we did a big tour in the US and we were quite successful but uh, so I I I like some uh, I swore I, I was drinking uh, more like the guys. Like I had to like one of the more books. like the guys. Yeah. Yeah, 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 like that, like yeah. so. And and um, and also being totally alone, actually, and al- also always feeling not really as a rock artist because I were not like the guys, like so. And then also uh, seeing uh, the the misogyny the sexism uh, everything happening around me we were touring uh, we were we were supporting a, a really big band in the US on their arena tour yep. and seeing also how uh, like the yeah. bus drivers the roadies and how they were like uh, exploiting young girls yeah, to, yeah. you know that I mean it was like some just right. fucking yeah. Like some. And then I felt on that tour, because I knew that Morrissey, fuck Morrissey, I would say now, but still, in he was not that uh, uh, crazy back then, I, and I liked Morrissey before. But anyway, <laughs> he had just been around touring at um, arenas in the US, and some people that worked on our tour, they had worked for him. And during his tour, he... Uh, um, he uh, made it uh, 
they were only uh, allowed to serve vegan food when he was playing and he had he was doing some things to change to to do some positive um, changes and then i thought that is amazing that if you have this a uh, lot uh, if you have so much power and if you have so much impact on people why don't do anything positive with it yeah uh, and then I felt with the guys that I was with, they were just fucking assholes all of them. <laughs> so actually, actually, uh, when we came home, I was so fed up, so I quit. And we had a really great, um, we had a, a lot of success. And we were just supposed to record a new album and then go back to the US and everything. Yeah. But I quit. And I think... Stop. If I had been with playing with girls, or if there were been more women around me, and maybe I, I didn't didn't have to quit, like some. No, no, and I'm in terms right. of a bit more like you've got uh, full moon and full helvete, which I, I yeah. like. Yeah, <laughs> how you say it, right? Full moon and full yeah. helvete, um, which is the full moon from hell. Which actually, like the moon, <laughs> I, I totally get that. I'm like, yes, the fucking. <laughs> full moon um, <laughs> um you play with an all yeah all women lineup and, yeah and how do you find that i mean like when i see you play live you just have such an incredible energy on stage that um yeah thank you yeah. no for me i've only been playing with women for the last couple of years uh, and in in a sense uh, i love playing with men also it's not like that no, no, but no. Uh, this is like for me comparing actually it's it's quite natural. It's it's uh, not only that I you know uh, been uh, choosing that, but it's also in natural because I yeah there's so many good female musicians living in Malmo. But it I think it's important that uh, your creative space is like a safe space and that you surround yourself uh, with um, with positive energy and I do really have a lot of really great male musician friends that I love to play with also but yeah it's, it has been a statement for me a little and bit. there was a statement I mean I've seen you a few a few times and every time I've seen you it's just this like power on stage this feminine power that I think just like it blows me away really I'm just like oh you know whereas I feel like if you had a dynamic of yeah I don't know there's just a femininity and it's quite unique and it's not something that you normally see. So I think that that makes it really, it just makes it very special. And I think, um, and you know, I think you just got to keep going because I think what you make is really special. Thank you, dear Anya. Makes me really happy. Actually, I've had a quite long break now. Yeah. Um, Sometimes you just so, need a break. You, you poured so much. I know. Poured so much into that album, like the last album and all that, yeah. the, the film clips and the branding and the, you know, all the stuff that goes along with with releasing an album. Yeah. And that that's a huge process. I mean, I had that. You know, I had I I released an album ten years in the making. You know. <laughs> at the end of a, of a very difficult mental health period and then at the end of, like when I released it, I just felt like so flat I'm just like Ugh, what now kind of thing um it's that kind of and it's a shame that we are all of us are so alone with these processes well, because I have, yeah, it would be I mean, nice if we could help each other more but then at the end it's hard to to do it i don't know but we should be better to organize i think you know creating maybe online spaces online safe spaces because online yeah. like my prediction after this pandemic i think it's going to be like a digital renaissance i think there's going to be like beauty like there's going to be you know online forums that are positive you know social media that is positive not negative you know like I really hope you are right. Uh, well, I'm, you know, I'm in the process of creating something. I'll share that with you. <laughs> um, but I just, there is a great uh, thing online um, tool called Oddly. Have you heard of it, Oddly? Is it the audio book? No, it's it's a, a great way for musicians that uh, write music together but on the distance nice. it's an amazing uh, tool um, that was actually one of the men guys in abba have has been founding it and it's free okay. uh, I, I, yeah, i'm gonna write it in the chat so um, collaboration a, like a collaboration nice. tool kind of thing yes nice. collaboration tool hmm? cool nice yeah. one but i hope you're right i think uh, this is an amazing opportunity to do 
something positive and, about it. I mean, after the Black Plague, that's when the Renaissance happened. That's so true, and yeah, now I get goosebumps. I know, right? <laughs> so I'm like, we're, we're living in a very unique time now, and I think it's up, and I think it's quite unique in Australia. We finally, so I've got a, a Enquil Firma, so a, a sole trader, yeah. like, like I had in Sweden, and my accountant was like, oh, you're eligible for JobKeeper, which is $1,500 a fortnight. For, that's like a full-time salary for six months as an artist. I'm just like, what is going on with this government? This government's wild. It's gone, <laughs> gone like full-on socialist. Like, it's crazy. They've got free childcare. They've got like doubled the, the uh, out of its family again, like the doll. They've yeah. um, introduced this job keeper payment. So all my artist friends are basically probably better off now than they were before the... <laughs> before That's the, great news. It's, it's like, yeah. and I think because of that, good yeah. work is going to be produced because artists need time to create. They yeah, can't they be do. working these crappy jobs that suck the life out of them and then try and produce works in the evening. It's just, it doesn't work that way. And no, I think if it would really be time to, um, to introduce what we say, medborgare learn in English. It's, what the fuck is it? Also, basic income. Like a, oh yeah, basic, universal basic income. Yeah, universal basic income. It's an amazing opportunity to, to test this now. Should. Now you are beeping. Yeah, <laughs> my speakers. But uh, tell me more about your new project, or do you have another question uh, for me? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, tell me more about your new project. Yeah, so it's something called Shy Piece, um, which is like a cultural platform. Okay. So basically, Shy piece means it's a Spanish term when, you know, when you've got like a plate of food, tapas, and you've got the last piece on the plate and it's called the shy piece. Because it's, mm. like, it's like, oh, you're too shy. To, no, you take it. No, you take it. Uh, the piece that's always left in Sweden. Yeah. Exactly. The little, little piece. Um, I don't know if maybe there's a Swedish term for that as well, but, um, but it, it stuck with me for, for like 10 years um, mm -hmm. when I went to Barcelona and it's kind of... My jewelry label was called that, and now it's evolved into something called Shy Piece, and it's just releasing um, releasing culture into the world. So, what I'm going to do every week is package together like um, like a like music, art, writing package, mm -hmm. and then people subscribe to that, so they get it every week, every Friday, mm. in their inbox. Great. So, mm -hmm. like so for example, like your album, I could put that in there. Yeah, 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 like a lucky dip. So you don't know what you're gonna get. Nice, yeah. Like mm -hmm. a, like a, you get fed like culture. Yeah. So that's really great. Great yeah, idea. Concept. So, uh, so what I'm gonna do now in the next few months, now that I've got this job keeper payment, mm -hmm. I can like, yeah, I'm just gonna stop recording him.